Family and friends of LaGrave, where does our help come from? Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Our help is in Jesus Christ, who's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So many of you may know that this coming Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent. And Advent for us is a very important part of our liturgical life in the church. Advent is a time where we stop and we wait and we reckon with the, the darkness and the sin that's in our world and the sin and darkness that's in our own hearts as we wait for the light of Christ to come. One of the things that we recognize when we look in our own hearts is that we are so often reaching for idols, reaching for other things in our, in our lives or other people in our lives who cannot save. Isaiah 64 is someone who, uh, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 64 helps us see that. In verse seven, he says, there is no one who calls on your name. He was speaking to God or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. But then Isaiah 64, verse eight. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hands. In these two verses, we hear the tension of Advent. On the one hand, we are so good at making idols of other things, at making idols of financial security, at making an idol of our own successes, our own accomplishment, at, at making an idol of being in control and having our life ordered in such a way that we can always have things the way we want to them. We're often reaching for things and people that cannot save us. And yet, as that second verse um, in Isaiah, Isaiah 64 verse eight says, our only hope is in God, our maker, the one who made us and who loves us and who will give his light to us. I read recently that Advent tension is about learning again that God is God that in between our deepest and even holiest longings and the reality of God, there is a gap that only grace can fill. I love that picture, that between me and God, there is a gap that grace can fill. It means I don't need to be afraid to take that inward look and look at what's wrong and what's dark and what's sinful in me. Because in between me and God, there is a grace-filled gap. And that gap is filled by the grace of Jesus and the light and the hope that he is coming to bring. And so friends, let's lean into Advent together. And as we do, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you wherever you are. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you in the storm. May he fill you with thanksgiving for the wonders he is showing you, and may he bring us all back together face to face again once more.